Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm so excited that you're here. You know, I have been giving these presentations about Airbnb, how to start your own Airbnb business. And in addition to get asking, you know, where can I, Nancy, where can I find my deal? How do I know how much to charge? Which I went over um, in last week's video. And then the next thing is, well, what do I put into my Airbnb? How can I make it attractive? So I decided to do a, a video on how I furnish my Airbnbs and the things that I use to stock this. So I'm calling this my most common items. And just know that sometimes these things can change, uh, you know, depending on, on seasons. But right now, this is a pretty standard formula for me of how I'm stocking my Airbnbs with the what I call the essentials. So now how much it costs is really going to be determinant on you because um, number one, if you have time and you have the ability to shop for deals, go to, you know, use Facebook marketplace, Craigslist, go to thrift stores. I found some great deals, but I got a $2,500 love seat for $160. Uh, and I found it at our local thrift store. So, you know, if you have the time and you have the way to get the um, items, it's a great place so that you don't have to buy brand new furniture. You know, I buy a lot of my stuff off of Amazon, Walmart. And then when I do buy furniture, if I ever have to, like, well, I buy mattresses. Um, I think that's really important. And I only deal with in stock because I have a certain deadline. I'm trying to get my property up and running. And so I don't want to wait three, six, seven, eight months to get a particular mattress. So you got to be a little flexible there. And then I get deals wherever I can. And you should too. Now, the style is also subjective. So what you might put in a lake house might be different from a, a cabin um, in a ski resort. So, you know, but some of the same things, like in the ones that I do, I use the same towels, the same sheets. So you can have your own formula for what you're going to put in your kitchen. And, you know, if you have a laundry area and then also, are you going for the luxury and upscale? Cause you might have to put in like a Keurig. We're going to talk about coffee pots later, but you might have to put in things that are a little bit more on the higher high end side. Um, and then who is your guest audience? So we're very pet friendly. So I'm going to talk about um, what I do to provide for pet friendliness, you know, uh, families, people with children. So who's your guest audience and how big is your space? So those are some things that are going to be um, subjective to your style as well. And then also your design and personal touches, because, you know, you want to put a little bit of your personality into the property. And then for me, I like to be a minimalist, meaning I'm not I don't have a lot of shelves with knickknack things on it or little decorative things like that. I'm, I stick kind of to the basics. Number one, I don't want to, have to worry about if anything gets stolen. Um, you know, some people make a business out of selling their artwork or baked goods, you know, so if you're a creative person like that, that, that could be a possibility of you making additional income. So first off, let's talk about the living room space. So this is actually an Airbnb that I have. And here are in every Airbnb I have in the living area. Number one, you see in the back there, I have a blanket ladder. It's just very, it's an attractive way to kind of fill up wall space where I didn't have to buy a picture for it. I do have a TV always in the living area, not so much in the bedrooms. I might put one in the master, but for the most part, I don't put TVs in the bedrooms. Um, this property sleeps six. So you'll notice I have two sofas and two, um, side chairs. Neither one of these sofas pulls out. Uh, they're just, you know, your standard, you have your coffee table. I have overhead lighting. I have a ceiling fan. Um, and you can't see it in this picture, but I do put up linen curtains. So in the living room, I don't put up, uh, shade blockers or anything like that because in this particular property, there's a really nice view. So kind of keep that in mind too. In the dining area, what you want to make sure of is, so I advertise uh, that this property sleeps six. So what you want to do in your dining area, eat in area, wherever that is, is that you have room for that number of people. So for example, if you only can host, um, let's say you can host 12 people, but you only have eating area for six, well, then where are those other six going to eat? Is it going to be in your living room? Is it going to be in the bedroom? So just kind of keep that in mind as you're staging. Um, you know, this particular uh, piece of furniture has four chairs and then you'll notice it has a bench. So I could actually get, you know, eight people, you know, you could always crowd it in or maybe you'll provide extra chairs. You know, that's fine. To just have some couple extra folding chairs in the closet or something or something so that they have an extra, basically an extra place at the table. 
Now, I do think it's really important. People love their coffee. So um, you're going to kind of laugh when I get to the coffee pot section. But what I do is I usually buy little canisters. You can see them on the back of that orange um, cabinet there. And I have a starter set of coffee. Um, I do, if there's a local coffee place, I'll go and get, um, you know, something besides Starbucks. It's a, like an actual local coffee house. I'll go and get a starter set of coffee from them or maybe leave if they have small little packets. But I do leave a starter set of coffee because who doesn't like waking up and being able to make their first coffee? Um, I have individual creamers. Um, I provide sweet and low and Splenda because people are different. And I do have a, a small container of sugar that I keep up in the cupboard. And then uh, one of the canisters is full of tea, just regular tea. I'm a Lipton tea drinker. Um, you know, there might be some English breakfast. So kind of customize it to what you think your audience is going to like. Now, it's not in the picture, but I also provide um, coffee filters. Now, I don't provide, you know, the whole stack. I do a starter set, right? Because I'm, you know, there, it's a short-term stay. I'm not, um, and plus for COVID reasons and just other things, you know, you want to make sure that you have clean sets of, of coffee filters. Now let's talk about coffee. So I am a Mr. Coffee gal. Uh, yes, I think they have Mrs. Coffee now or Ms. Coffee. But now you might prefer the Keurig, you know, the little cups or whatever. Um, I don't. I don't like the plastic, you know, not being able to recycle or, you know, the just the additional trash that it creates. So the Mr. Coffee is inexpensive. Um, so far, I put them in all my Airbnbs and I haven't had one complaint about not having um, a Keurig. So what people complain about and what I get asked about is, uh, what kind of coffee pot do you have? And do you provide coffee? So people are really, um, you know, they're wanting their coffee. So make that a priority in your kitchen. Now let's talk about a tea kettle. Now I personally don't have a tea kettle, so it's recommended in some Airbnb uh, places. Cause I mean, I, I make my tea in a cup in the microwave. Um, but this might be something, if that's something that you do add a tea kettle. Again, I haven't had anyone ask for it. Um, and they're kind of pricey. I was kind of surprised about how much they cost, but this might be something that you might want to add for your guests. I do not add this. This is not, um, but I just thought I would throw it in there because it is something that if people just only drink tea, um, or you're just a tea drinker, maybe this is something that you have and you know, you feel that people should have that. I just looked at it as one more thing to clean. <laughs> and after I saw the prices of the nice ones that are going to last a while, I, I just did a hard pass on that. Okay, let's talk about plates, cups, and bowls. Now, I usually buy, um, you know, and you can get whatever, you know, whatever your heart desires. Um, I tend to just do basics, right? Now, I have bought patterned, um, you know, dishes. I tend to just stay with the white because if one gets broken or something, it's easier. I find it's easier to replace rather than having patterned dishes, but that doesn't mean I don't have a plethora of coffee mugs that I've picked up that I might have in the cabinet or whatever. And I did um, notice when I bought my last uh, group of plates and bowls, it didn't come with coffee mugs. I was like, what? So I missed that. So kind of just, you know, check it out. They don't all have to match. Um, it's a complete preference. But again, if I have, if I advertise for six people, then I have a set of 12. So if you're doing 16, you should have a set of 13. 32. So make sure you have double because look at it this way. People are going to eat and they're not necessarily going to wash up the dish. I mean, that's kind of annoying. You have to wash the dish before you can eat again off of it. Um, I didn't put this in here, but we also provide a small amount of paper plates in um, our areas because we have a picnic area and, you know, I don't really want them to take my dishes out. So kind of just think like that. Will they be taking the dishes outside? How would they use the dishes? And sometimes you have to provide, you know, a little extra, maybe plastic plates if they have chips. Children. We do have like a little toddler set, so you could provide that. Um, so just kind of think about that. <clears throat> if you have pattern dishes and one or two get broken, are you going to have to buy the whole set to replace those? Or can you just go find and a lot of times you can find these white dishes at thrift stores. Okay, silverware. Um, so this is kind of a biggie for me for number one, have enough for advertised guests. So if um, I think most um, silverware either comes in sets of four for four people um, so again, I like to have double. So if I'm, you know, I want to have a minimum of, I said six guests. So I want to have a minimum of 12 pieces. Now, this is something again, that can go missing. You know, they take a spoon out to the deck to stir their coffee or whatever. 
So I would get very generic um, silverware because again, if I have to replace it, then it's easier. I don't have to buy the whole four. You know, I can usually go and find just the knives or the spoons or the forks. So just remember to double it. And, you know, <clears throat> no one's going to ding you if you have mismatch um, silverware. So if you have like all the same and then you have a couple forks that are different, no one's going to say anything about that. Um, but do keep a good stock for your guests. Because again, it's the same thing. They are not going to want to wash uh, a fork when they get ready to eat again. Now glasses, so we provide a, a whole bunch of different kinds of glasses. So I have regular drinking glasses that are glass. Uh, we have a deck uh, on one property, we have a hot tub on another. So I really don't want them to take those glasses out. So I also have plastic tumblers, those kind that are multicolored. Um, and I also have stemmed wine glasses, not too many of those. I like the, you can get them on Amazon, um, they're stemless. And they're not necessarily, I guess they are kind of like a hard plastic, but they're dishwasher safe. You can put them in the dishwasher. Um, again, think about where your um, guests might be having a glass of wine. Is it going to be someplace where if it breaks, it's going to be a problem as far as the cleanup or the glass shards, that kind of thing. So kind of think like that, where would they be drinking the wine? So in one of our properties, we have a very nice deck and that's, you know, I like to drink my wine there. Uh, and if I dropped a glass, it's wood, so it's probably not going to break, but also if it is, if it does happen to, you know, break the stem off, that's, you know, not going to be very fun if it gets stuck into the board slats. So kind of just use some common sense. So drinking glasses, because usually people like the glass glasses when they're inside their milk, their juice, that kind of thing. Um, and then it's up to you if you want to provide different sizes. We don't, we just have the want regular, um, I think they're eight ounce or 16 ounce glasses. They're just normal glasses. So I don't do the tumblers, but if you have a bar area and you're kind of advertising that, you know, maybe having some nice, uh, highball glasses would be good. So again, personal preference, um, I would recommend getting sturdy glasses because they have, um, glasses that are very thin, you know, and they break easily. So I do buy heavy duty glass glasses. Dishwasher safe. Okay, nice set. Now we talked about silverware, but think about this. If somebody, if you're in an Airbnb and you like to cook, you know, you have to have cutting utensils for vegetables or fruit or meat or whatever. So we actually provide two sets of uh, nice. One is for cutting, like you would cut while you're cooking. And then the other one is like, if you have steak or pork chop or chicken, and you need to have like a, a steak knife to cut at the dinner table. Um, we also have barbecue utensils and we just, again, I don't spend a ton of money on this stuff because um, the barbecue utensils, especially can always go walking off, but we do provide that because I don't want them to use my rubber spatula on the barbecue grill. The kitchen area, we're going to just continue about pots and pans. So you know what? Don't spend a ton of money on pots and pans because they're going to get beat up, burn up, um, and you're going to end up replacing them. So just know to get an inexpensive starter set. You can see this is the kind I got. I think I got it off of Amazon or Walmart. Um, and it just has the right amount. Now, because it doesn't have a griddle, we did um, purchase separately, uh, like for pancakes or grilled cheese or something like that. So you just want to make it, I mean, think about your own cooking. You know, I'm not a big cooker. My husband is, but you know, you got to have some pots and pans, but don't spend a ton of money here because you're going to replace them probably about once a year. Now we also provide, you know, different kinds of cooking pans. Um, you know, especially if you're uh, having guests over the holidays, they might want to make a cake. They might want to make, I had somebody ask me about a pie and we actually had a pie dish there. Um, you know, muffins, cookies. Uh, we ended up buying some pizza, uh, pizza pans, um, because people, you know, sometimes they just want to bake. Sometimes they just come to your place and that's kind of why if you're having a fully stocked kitchen, you know, you really want to have, you know, think about the things that they might, um, use. Now these are very inexpensive, um, and so far, the ones that we bought right off of, I want to say I did it off of Walmart. They've been holding up really well. I'm, I'm kind of shocked. Set of spatulas. Now, this isn't my most favorite. This is just a picture I found. Um, I kind of like the ones that have the really, they're black and they have the heavy duty, you know, hard plastic. Uh, the most important thing to me is that they're dishwasher safe uh, and that they're not going to rust. So a lot of times a whisk, when you get the metal ones, the little thing, you know, it rusts or whatever. So I like them to be durable. Now, if you took, I think these might be silicone. And if you took those out on a barbecue grill, yeah, they probably melt. So you, you don't want to do that. 
but you do want to have like some cooking utensils that they can use so that they're a not using your silverware. Okay. Cause that's going to tear up your pans faster if they're just using a fork or a spoon or whatever. So you want to make sure that you have some cooking utensils as well. And you know what? I throw in uh, some uh, plastic ware because, you know, maybe they made a meal and they have some leftovers and they want to eat it the next day or whatever. So, you know, these are very inexpensive. Uh, you will have to replace them because they walk off, they get damaged. I do make sure I get the ones that are dishwasher safe, but, you know, they're not the, you know, they're not the high end ones. They're just there for them to use. And I always do keep a backup set in my owner closet. And I do a, a starter supply of foil, saran wrap, wax paper, and baggies. Now, um, you can go buy, you know, just small quantities at the store. Um, if I buy in bulk, maybe not the foil, but for baggies and things like that, I'll just have a container that has baggies and, you know, some potato chip clips or something in a drawer. So I don't go and buy, but you can buy small, uh, small amounts, I guess I want to say, of saran wrap and foil. And again, it's just that consideration of, you know, think about, you know, food storage and, you know, maybe they want to save something. Maybe they want to put something out on the deck or outside. They're having a picnic and they want something to cover that temporarily. Okay. So in the bedrooms, I uh, see my little M kind of went down. So this is a, a bedroom in the same house. And here, the formula that I use is um, these windows do have blackout shades. Just can't really see them. You can see kind of one. They have blackout shades. So we put blackout either shades or blinds in all the bedrooms. Um, this is about all the decorating I do. I, I do a couple pictures. I actually picked these up at a thrift store. Um, and uh, this is my formula. I have two nightstands if the room is big enough. And I have two lamps and these lamps and people love these have the USB port. They're a little bit more pricey, but if you can get them, they're, you know, they're kind of cool. I also do a luggage rack. If you can see it under the window in the back, um, because this room doesn't have a dresser in it. People typically don't use a dresser. All of our bedrooms have, have a closet, but we also provide luggage racks in all the rooms. And if you're going to get those order them today, because they do take a little bit to come in. So our formula for really decorating bedrooms is I use white everything. Um, you'll see that the white uh, quilt, and then we have an accent pillow and then blue. And I'm going to talk about the extra blankets. We uh, have vinyl plank throughout. Um, even if we had carpet, I would probably put like an area rug down because twofold. Number one, when people get up in the morning, they typically don't want to put their feet on the, you know, kind of cool or cold if it's, you know, winter time. And then also, if you do have an area rug, it kind of helps to keep your sheets a little cleaner because when they're getting into bed, what are they doing? They're walking on the, on, not on the floor, they're walking on the carpet. So, you know, some of the dirt might come off that way. Um, put a little bit of artwork, a ceiling fan. And if you don't have ceiling fans, I actually get asked this quite a bit. If we have ceiling fans in our um, Airbnb bedrooms, um, and we do, cause I personally like them as well, but we also provide fans like, you know, just your box fans. Cause people like that noise, the, you know, to, you know, maybe you got a barky dog next door or whatever. So it's kind of nice. Also, they can use it if they just want some extra circulation through the house. Now let's talk about bed size because bed size does matter. So if you've heard me talk about this topic before, so I have a three bedroom, two bath, and that's typically, you know, a three or four bedroom. Um, if you have the ability in one of your bedrooms to put a king size bed in it, I highly recommend and suggest you do that. Why? Because people search by bed size. So if you're six, three, you know, it's probably a double or queen's not going to cut it for you. So you're looking for a, a bigger bed. So we'll put a king in one bed in one bedroom and two queens on the other. Now I have used bunk beds before. Um, and so as a personal preference, I don't like bunk beds. Uh, I found that they're kind of a liability issue. So just kind of think about that, um, you know, for bunk beds. I know people are very fond of the, the, uh, two, the bunk bed that has the twin on the top and the double or queen on the bottom. Uh, none of our, our bedrooms were too small to do that. But I found this nice chart. So if you're, you know, just now getting into Airbnb and you're looking for, you know, spacing out your space, uh, this gives you the uh, dimensions of the California King versus a twin. And what I found is um, like in our bonus rooms, instead of doing pullout couches, because they're, you know, they're uncomfortable. If you've ever slept one, you got that rod going up right in the middle of your back. So I actually like trundle beds. 
uh, they're attractive and you can get, you know, another person on there. So it's kind of like a bunk bed with bunk beds. Actually, my insurance guy told me this, um, you know, there could be a liability issue. So if there's like a, you know, um, a little kid up there and he falls out, ooh, that could be, you know, on you. So I kind of, st I steered away from bunk beds. Um, plus the cleaners hate to make the bunk beds. They just hate them. All right. Sheets and pillows. So um, here's just some tips. So you should have two pillows per guest, right? So if you have, uh, see three beds, then that means you're going to have, see that's six, that's 12, 12 pillows. Um, if you have a king size bed buy the king size pillow, cause that looks kind of funky when you don't. And then, you know what we go for white, it looks really, really clean and no, it has not been hard. There's so many tricks with hydrogen peroxide, and vinegar and baking soda and all the, all the products out there that you can get stains out. And so far, um, I've been using the same set for a little while now, and they're not showing wear and tear. Now I'm going to just share this with you. And the link is below. Um, I buy my sheets at Walmart and they are nice. They, uh, I have a friend, I tell the story on her all the time. She came to our, I had her come to the Airbnb is, you know, check it out when we first launched and uh, you know, she would not buy her sheets at Walmart. <laughs> and so she slept in the bed and the next morning she goes, where'd you get those sheets? They're nice. They're cotton. They're, they, uh, minimal wrinkling and they're just nice and they're inexpensive and it's great. So I would highly recommend when you're getting started, you just buy two sets of, for every bed right off the bat and then look for them when they're on sale. Like, uh, so what we do is we have two sheets of the white or I'm sorry, two sets of every, for every bed in white. And then as I see sheets go on sale, I buy a third set. But what I do with that is I put it up in the closet or the, the rooms that do have a dresser so that if there's an accident that the guest has, they have some clean sheets without, you know, me getting into the owner closet because I don't let them get into the owner closet. But I put an extra set of sheets in the property, you know, maybe a queen if I have a king or whatever. And those are ones I've just picked up. They're not white. They're just, hey, these are emergency ones. And then, um, so that's my third set for accidents. Um, and then the reason you want to have at least two is as you have turnover, your cleaner will be cleaning one set while she's getting the other one. So, you know, the, the one thing I will say about the, um, if you had all queen beds and you had all queen sheets, it'd be easy for the cleaners. So we actually have uh, containers in our owner closet that says, okay, these are the king sheets because they're, they're they all look the same. So sometimes it's hard to tell, but we love the white sheets and we've gotten great reviews on them. So, and it's easy to decorate when you do white. Now I'm going to talk about quilts, <coughs> excuse me, versus comforters versus duvets. <coughs> they all three look nice and you can make them look really, really nice. But what I look at is the dry time. So number one, the, I use a quilt. Again, the link is below it's from Walmart and it's white. Um, the picture that I showed you of the bedroom earlier, you can go back and look at it. That is from Walmart and it's very nice. It wears nice. It lays nice. I just love how it's so flat and it just makes the bed look, I think very neat. Um, these are very nice looks as well. They just have, have a tendency, like do you put anything on them? They get a dent in them and whatnot. But also from the cleaning standpoint, especially if you're doing it on your own, it's hard to get these babies into the washing machine and they take forever to dry, you know? So just think about time turnover. So if you have a property, so unless you're having two comforters or three comforters, you know, this, this adds to your wash dry time. And so that's why I like the quilts because they can go in the washing machine and they can, and they dry fast and they're ready to go. Extra blanket. So in the beginning, if you remember, I talked about the living room and the um, blanket ladder. I love blanket ladders. I think you get some fun, you know, blankets and you can throw them up there and just gives a lot of pop to the room. Well, you'll notice in that last picture that I had a blue uh, throw over the corner. And this is, I can't take credit for that. I saw it on Pinterest or something. I was like, oh, but we color coordinate our rooms by that extra throw blanket. Everybody, I don't know, I like to have an extra blanket at night to cuddle up with or whatever. So we color coordinate on our bed. So all the bedding is white, the sheets, the covers for the pillows, the, you know, the quilt is all white. And then we put that pop of color with 
the blankets. It looks really cool. Didn't it? Didn't it look cool in the picture? So we'll do blue or red. And we're doing one right now where we have a black headboard. We're going to have white sheets. I got a red and it has red lamps. It's going to look so awesome. And then we try to color coordinate with the carpet. We're not always 100% on that one because, you know, the carpet might be on sale because um, I don't know if you bought carpets lately, rugs, Woo, not cheap. So, um, but yeah, we really like that. And our guests have totally enjoyed it. And it's just a good way to add, especially if you're doing the boring white thing, give it that pop of color. Now in the bath. Um, so this is a picture of the, of a bath that we did. Um, and I kind of want to talk about a couple of things. Number one, the toilet paper I always get, you know, how much do you leave out? So I, I usually leave out about four to five rolls in the bathroom, right? Um, that's good, you know, for people staying for a week or whatever, and then they have to buy their own after that. And, you know, this is an area don't really cheap out on, you know, don't chance out on the toilet paper because I'm on a septic system and you could probably see that little sign back there. And it's basically, you know, don't flush anything down there. So I don't want them to throw other things down the toilet if they run out of toilet paper. So we do make sure we have a good supply of that. Also on makeup gals, you know what I'm talking about here. So I have mascara on that, man, it turns any white wash, boom. And it's, you know, I got to use a lot of Clorox to get the makeup out. So we do provide black makeup um, um, uh, cloths so that people can use that to wash their face. Also individual, I think it's by Neutrogena. They're just individual little makeup wipes that you can have just as long as they don't throw them down the toilet. And then you'll also see there on the counter, have a little tray and there's little jars there and one's filled with Q-tips and one's with cotton balls. Then we also have hand soap. And then in the shower, we provide shampoo, conditioner, and body wash. And I just buy those pump bottles. I did a video on, um, you know, how we economically do that. Um, so you'll have to catch that video to see what I do to be uh, economy and efficiency in my uh, toiletries that I provide. Now, towels, hand, hand and washcloth. So here we go. Um, so I put out two per guest. Now you can do it a couple different ways, depending on your space. So I have one, um, one room that it's, you know, I have two bathrooms and it's a small bathroom. So there's only like one towel bar. So you can fold them or roll them like this. It depends. It really is your cleaner, right? Unless you're doing it. The roll looks nice. I personally can't do that because it still looks uneven. So I like the fold and it just looks a little bit better in my eyes when I do it. Um, but you can hang them up in the bathroom. You know, that looks really nice. Some people do a real professional job where they, you know, they hang the bath towel, then they hang the, um, the, uh, hand towel. And then the washcloth goes over that. Um, we keep all of our extra towels in our owner closet. And so when the part of our checkout instructions is that they put all the towels in the bathtub, why the bathtub? Well, because if they're wet, I want them to be in the bathtub and not molding in the closet floor. Um, and then you can also place them on the bed. That looks really nice. We have one property that they do place them on the bed. So we do two get two, um, two, two towels per guest. Um, and we have washer and dryers. So if they, you know, they can wash them if they need more, but that usually hasn't run into a problem. I personally do I have one area in a bathroom. It has a big, uh, cabinet and I'll leave out maybe four spares, right? Cause I don't want to be that host that, you know, was like, oh, they only gave me two. That's all they would give. I mean, I don't know about you, but I usually use two towels. So I like to make sure people have what they need when they come to our house. Here's the black makeup towels. Now I heard that these were uh, getting on back order. So these are the more fancier ones. The ones I have don't have the little curly Q on them, but they do say makeup on them. And then I think it looks really nice to display them. So I'll put a couple out and then there'll be a couple in the vanity so that they can use them uh, just as a reminder not to use my white washcloths. And you know what? So far, so good. I haven't really had anybody use the white washcloths like you know you would to wash it off. Um, and then of course we do provide a little jar in the cabinet with, um, some individual makeup wipes, but you know what, they sell these, um, on Amazon in bulk and I would highly get them. One thing is the quality of the ones that I've got and they've hold, held up pretty good. Um, but they do tend to fade over time. So this is something that you would be replacing and you don't have to provide them. I mean, some people, again, this is my own personal preference. Some people like to do, you know, white towels. I personally don't like black towels as far as, you know, when I get out of the shower or whatever. Um, but you know, gray, or maybe you like patterned. Um, I think you just kind of have to think about how do they wash, right? Cause I like a lot of Clorox in my, uh, towels and I want to make sure they're super duper clean. 
Now, beach towels. Now, this is, um, I have, um, I do get beach towels. Uh, one house, we have a pool. One house, we have a hot tub. But you know what? Even if I didn't, I'm close to a lake and I do not want them taking my white towels out to the beach. So I provide uh, beach towels. And one of the things that we do is I have a big basket in each of my properties for old towels, like where I got them around my house because we're pet friendly. And, uh, you know, it's kind of what, and I have a sign that says old towels so that if there's a spill in the house or, you know, it's muddy out and their um, fur baby came in and it's got muddy paws or whatever, they can use those towels to wipe that up rather than my white towels, you know, so if a spill happens, they can go run one of those and get them. Um, and that's, you know, that's worked out really good. And actually people have appreciated that and thought it was very thoughtful that I would think of putting old towels for them to use in case of an emergency or they had to wipe up something, or I don't know, maybe they need to work on their car. I mean, these are towels. So these could be beach towels that I've had that are kind of worn out. They could be my old white towels that have, you know, worn out, they got a hole in them. So it doesn't really matter. They're just old towels and they can be used however they want. Okay. A hairdryer uh is no matter where you're at everybody likes to have a hair dryer um i don't spend a ton of money on hair dryers because they can go off walking if you know what i mean i have never had that happen i've just heard stories about it so provide a hair dryer in the bathroom i just provide one even if i have two bedrooms or i have six guests i just have one one um and we also provide shampoo conditioner and body wash now this is all personal preference uh, I'll just tell you, I use swab. Um, I go buy the giant bottles and I pour it into my pump bottles, put a nice little sticker on it, call it a day. Um, so you don't have to spend a lot of money and it just goes so much when you provide that. Because think of when you're traveling, you don't have to cart all that stuff. And when you're listing your property on Airbnb or VRBR or any other platform, you're actually able to you know, check the box that you provide that and it's really nice. Okay, so I'm pet friendly at all my properties. And so I do provide poop bags for my guests, for my fur baby guests. So here's why. So when I'm communicating with the guests and you know I'm, I'm finding out about their animal and I travel with my animals and my animals do get on the furniture and uh, the bed, you know? So if you're a dog lover, you probably can relate to this, but we have an area, you know, a designated area where they can go and do their business. And I do expect the owners to pick them up. So we provide poop bags and we tell them where to dispose of the poop bag. Um, now, even though you're sitting here saying, well, I'm not gonna accept pets or whatever, you know what? What about when that person says they have an emotional support animal or a service animal and you cannot turn them away and that dog's going to need to do its business somewhere. So it's always nice, even if you don't advertise it, just to have these because you never know. So when that guest says, hey, you know what, I'm bringing my service animal. Oh, OK, well, you know, just for this case, you can you don't have to put them out. You can tell them where they're at and people really appreciate it. The more you can make a person's pet feel welcome, like they're part of the family, those guests will love you. And I've had more comp compliments about how we uh, talk to our guests about their, you know, their fur baby. We want them to be, you know, have a good time too. Now we do have pet bowls. So if you remember in that one picture of the uh, dining area, I had that orange cabinet. Well, in that orange cabinet is where I keep the poop uh, bags. And I have uh, dog bowls for water and food, and I have a mat. And in my uh, welcome instructions and in my welcome book, I say, well, we typically, you know, feed our fur babies over here by the refrigerator. So you can kind of let them know where to put their dog bowls so that they're eating in the same area. We have a laundry room off to the kitchen of one. So we, you know, tell them, tell the guests that so that they say, oh, okay. So they, you're already taking care of something so that they don't have to worry about, well, where am I going to put the dog? Am I just going to put it down, you know, put the dog food here in the middle of the kitchen? So we do it in our instructions when they um, first book. We also, um, you know, just say, hey, this is where we feed our pets. And, you know, it's worked out wonderfully. Now, we also provide uh, dog pets. Now, mine aren't don't look like this. They're brown. Um, and the reason I got brown was just because they're very neutral. And I hang them after they're clean. They're hanged on the blanket ladder. So they're out of the way, but they're available to those people that are bringing their fur babies. Now, let me qualify because I don't allow cats. Okay, so, and I have a cat, so I just don't allow cats. 
Um, but we put these on the blanket ladder. And again, I communicate to the guest, hey, I have these um, dog pads. So please make sure to use them on the furniture, uh, including the bed, right? And this will help minimize the dust and dander and hair from animals. Um, and so far, so good. Everybody's used them and they've appreciated that I have provided that for their fur baby. And a lot of times they'll say, well, they don't get on the furniture or whatever, but you know, like my little dog, he likes to get on the furniture and I'm okay with that. Okay. So these are a couple of things that you might not have thought about putting in there. So I, I can't tell you the last time I ironed something. Um, my husband loves to iron, but um, iron and ironing board should be hanging up. Uh, if you have a closet, laundry room, you can buy these really cute little, you know, they hang on the wall and the iron goes and then the, you know, the hooks from the legs of the ironing board go there. So yeah, pick it up and you'll be shocked at how much ironing boards are. I was when I got them. So we do provide that. And then we also provide a broom and dustpan and we have a couple of mops, but I don't usually like to keep mops around because, you know, if they don't clean them right. Um, and I've actually had guests, I had a property, I didn't have one because, you know, we had the cleaners or whatever. And they actually asked me where the uh, broom and dustpan is. So from now on, I always put one in. So I guess if they spill something, flour, or whatever on the floor, they have it. So I thought that was very interesting that she asked for that. And it happened to be a property that gets a lot of leaves when the front door opens. So she wanted to clean all that up. So we always make sure we have uh, a broom and dustpan. And I think it's funny because I don't use either of those items. So. <laughs> Okay, so some additional items that I didn't really talk about. And as I'm sitting here even talking to you, I'm like, oh yeah, we could talk about this. I mean, the list goes on and on, but hopefully this will give you a good start of what you need to be thinking about and buying uh, for your Airbnb. So uh, you need to have a starter supply of dishwasher soap. And if you have a, um, so if you have a dishwasher and you want them to do the dishes, you got to provide them with some soap, right? Um, so in our checkout rules, we tell them to put the dishes in and start the dishwasher. They don't have to put them up. They just need to start it. And then some dishwashing soap, some Windex, and I didn't mention paper towels. We leave a couple of rolls of paper towels, some laundry detergent, just a starter. So what I normally do is I'll get a little, um, decorative bowl and I'll put it in the laundry room and I'll put like four or five pods in there. I use the pods. I think that's easier than trying to do the, um, for the Airbnb. And then I'll leave like four or five dryer sheets. So I'm not saying go out and buy. So you can buy one big container of whatever laundry detergent you want, and you can put it in smaller containers so that you're not putting the whole thing out there and it's walking off. You know what I mean? So you can be a little bit more efficient about that. So those are just some things, but yes. Um, and again, I get asked all the time and I was actually going to do um, how much things cost, but as when I'm recording it now, you know, the prices could be completely out the window. You know, we didn't really talk about furniture, but that's all kind of pers personal preference and how your space is going to be set up the number of bedrooms, you know, how many people you can not only sleep, but uh, you know, eat at the dining table. So I hope this was really helpful for you all. Uh, I enjoyed putting this together because it was just, it's kind of a formula for me. I realized I kind of buy the same things, you know, maybe I'll interject. I have my favorite stores that I go to and I don't have a lot of time. So I do a lot of ordering online, get it all and then take it out. And I can tell you that when you have, when you do it in bulk, and you have, um, you know, your cleaner can stock things for you. They can let you know that, hey, you're running low on, you know, trash bags, which I didn't mention. So you need to have a starter supply of trash bags. Um, so you just kind of think about, okay, if you want the guests to take care of your property, then you've got to provide them with the, the minimal, you know, starter set of paper towels, the broom, uh, dishwashing soap, you know, because like I said before, like when you have the dishes, they, they need some place to wash them. And if you don't provide that, then the dishes probably aren't going to get done. Right. So if you have any questions, shoot me an email, nancy at kbnhomes.com or give me a ring at 469-430-9885. And if you like this, you know what, share it. I'm really trying to, I met my goal of getting a hundred people at the end of the, uh, before the end of the year. Yay. So now I'm working on my next goal, which is 500. So if you like this video, give me a like and give me a share. Thanks so much and happy investing.